We looked up six of your favorite authors' favorite books, and Richard, you know the first one I looked up? Who do you got? Stephen King. What's it? You know, mm. Steve, you haven't read much Stephen King. I haven't, and I'm curious what his dark mind would well, think is his favorite. Get this. It, I've never heard of this book, and I immediately want to read it. It's called, uh, and big caveat being, authors listed a lot of their favorites, but we looked at the most prevalent, and Stephen King actually said this was his favorite in an interview. Okay. So he was asked this, and he responded, his favorite was Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurdy. What's that one about? For, I will tell you what it's about, but first has a 4.52 on Goodreads. Damn. Right? Damn. Right? 4.5 mark. 4.5 mark. And this oh, is, that's hard to pass. This is the small blurb, and it got me. Mm-hmm. It's a love story, an adventure, and an epic of the frontier. Larry McMurdy's Pulitzer Prize winning classic, Lonesome Dove, the third book in the Lonesome Dove tetralogy, is a is the grandest novel ever written about the last defiant wilderness of America. Journey to the dusty little Texas town of Lonesome Dove and meet an unforgettable assortment of heroes and outlaws, whores and ladies, Indians and settlers, richly authentic, beautifully written, always dramatic, Lonesome Dove is a book to make us laugh, weep, dream, and remember. I'm already down. Sounds like the Western I need. Uh, it's I don't even know I if it's a fantasy, but it sounds so freaking cool. It's probably it's not. Not, I mean, it sounds so freaking cool, partner. <laughs> well, I should have said that in Southern accent the whole time. You, you don't got the Southern drawl. <laughs> <laughs> you, okay, you want the next author? Are you interested in that book? Yeah. Okay. Actually, I am, because I am a big fan of fantasy movies and yeah. TV shows, and I really want to read more in the actual literary Western novels. I If it's a fantasy Western, that, ooh, that would be sick. I doubt it, because Stephen King, I, he does fantasy, but it's not that often. Yeah, he goes more He's not horror, really so. known for fantasy. But man, I never heard of that book, and it seems awesome. Mm-hmm. Now, more, I mean, more for our channel here, Brandon Sanderson, you know what his favorite book ever is? I'm going, can I make a guess? Guess, go ahead and guess. I'm guessing... Going Postal no, by Terry Pratchett. No, but here's the Dang. thing. He, so Sanderson didn't literally state, this is my favorite book. This is how I got this answer. He said one of, and he always mentions this, Terry Pratchett, the author of Discworld, is his favorite author. And when, when Terry Pratchett was living, he said he was his favorite living author, and he says this multiple times in interviews. He was also asked, and you could check this on his site, all the sources will be in the YouTube description here. He was asked what's your favorite Terry Pratchett novel? So of his favorite author, what's his favorite Terry Pratchett novel? And he said it was The Truth by Terry Pratchett. And this is in quotes. This is what Sanderson said about The Truth. He says, as a writer and one who likes to explore the nature of the truth in his works, a novel that deals with someone trying to publish a newspaper in a fantasy world mixed philosophy and laughs in a way only Pratchett can. You want to hear what the book's about? Yeah, I actually... You've never heard of it. I haven't actually read this one yet. Have you heard of it? I've heard the name mentioned. I actually don't know what it's about. So it's William DeWord is an accidental editor of the Discworld's first newspaper. (laughs) Now he must cope with the traditional perils of a journalist's life, people who want him dead, a recovering vampire with a suicidal fascination for flash photography, some more people (laughs) who want him dead in different ways, and worst of all, the man who keeps begging him to publish pictures of his humorously shaped potatoes. This sounds so awesome. It has a 4.39 on Goodreads. Terry Pratchett's a legend. Suicidal fascination with flash photography. <laughs> and pictures of humorously shaped potatoes. Rich, I think we should read this next and have a review on Tudor Ramble. This sounds awesome. Oh, just that image is so funny. Isn't it? I love Terry. Are you, oh, Pratchett's We my are favorite. definitely reading that at some point. Oh, yeah. No I'm question. Happy. No I've question. Been working, I want to work my way through Discworld chronologically because it's okay. definitely the most fun. So I'm hoping that's not like 38 or something. I'm oh. hoping it's one of its earlier ones. I hope so, too. So do you got one for me, an author that I, you looked up? I actually roll right into it. Terry Pratchett's oh. favorite books. So one of my favorite authors, Terry Pratchett, and... He actually does not talk about his favorite authors or books very often. Most of his interviews come from uh, talking about uh, Alzheimer's and assisted suicide. But there was at one point in the the Guardian actually reached out to several authors and asked them to ask them what is the their favorite book of the decade. The so okay at that time Terry Pratchett actually did respond and said Bill Bryerson's A Short History. Of nearly everything. A short history of nearly everything. Yep. This is a non 
fiction book. Where what? so Bill so on Goodreads it has a four point two one on Goodreads. That's great. Yeah. Bill Bill Bryerson describes himself as a reluctant traveler, but even when he stays safely at home, he can't contain his curiosity about the world around him. A short history of nearly everything is his quest to understand everything that has happened from the Big Bang to the rise of civilization. How how we got uh, from there being nothing at all to here being us. The ultimate eye-opening journey through time and space, revealing the world in a way most of us have never seen it before. Most of the comments in Goodreads actually talk about how, you know, this person says, good grief, if if I had even one textbook half this enthralling in high school, who knows what kind of impassioned ologist I would have been growing up. I hear Pi petition Bryerson to rewrite all curriculum on behalf of the history of the world. That The coolest thing about that is Terry Pratchett is so fantastical mm-hmm. in the disc world for his favorite book of that decade to be a nonfiction book says a lot mm-hmm. about the book. Well, yeah. Well, also, Terry Pratchett himself is a big fan of history. That's okay. A, a big thing for him is he is a study of history. He yeah. likes, um, actually, he does like Warhammer quite a bit when he was growing up. Nice. So he's a complicated man. He nice. likes he nice. likes astrology as well. So I thought that was a really interesting pick for him. That, that's an interesting pick, and I, I will say, not as interesting as the ones I'm about to tell you here. Okay, gonna okay, one-up okay. you. You ready? You gonna try? You said Terry Pratchett. I'm gonna give you J.K. Rowling. All right. All right. J.K. Rowling, her favorite book. Now, again, it's tough to find the favorite book, so this is how I got J.K. Rowling's. She always references Jane Austen as one of her favorite authors ever, her biggest influence Obviously, there's other influences. This is one of the most prevalent that you see. She had an interview with Amazon back in the 90s, believe it or not. Amazon did exist in the 90s, where she said Jane Austen was her favorite author, and one of her favorite books that she's read at least 20 times from Jane Austen is the book called Emma. I have heard of that. You one. have yes. heard of Emma. Yeah, it's, I haven't read it yet. It was published in 1815. I mean, it's Jane Austen, so it's an old book. It's a classic. It's a 4.04 on Goodreads, but Goodreads always hates on classics for some reason. So take that with a grain of salt. That's the time effect for most Goodreads stuff. No, Goodreads people are like us, but worse, because we, we are so <laughs> critical on this channel. Imagine oh, imagine us going on Goodreads. Oh, Well, Goodreads also has the recency bias problem. They do, they do. And the longer a book is on there, just the more time hate comments get to crop up. It's just... I- a critique is. YouTube booktube channel critiquing a critique website just to uh, next I, video on Tudor Ramble <laughs> <laughs> just a whole good reason critiquing <laughs> video critiquers but, so Emma this this one What's very about? very quick blurb beautiful clever rich a single Emma Woodhouse is perfectly content with her life and sees no need for either love or marriage nothing however delights her more than interfering in the romantic lives of others and I will say <laughs> I call myself a man. Then I heard like the romantic and take them. Like, oh, I want to. <laughs> let me. Oh, what you entangling? I, will I got say so that excited. Actually sounds very funny. I enjoy that. Just messing with other people. That's kind of fun. It sounds like good work gossip. You know. You know when. Mm. Uh, it, it, I'm sorry, but a lot of people don't have good work stories. It's like, oh, how was your day at work? And it's usually boring. This seems like yeah. she's got a lot to say at work. Something happened. I think you're making a little jab at me. <laughs> It was. Oh, wait, I, I didn't mean it. <laughs> All right, I'll finish off with this, okay? Then I'll, yeah. I want to hear who you have last. George R. R. Martin. Yeah. George R. R. Martin, and again, it's tough to narrow this down, but in a video, he was asked, who is, what, what's your favorite book ever? Mm-hmm. He named a bunch, but he only named three by name. Okay. You, why did I say three? I went threes. <laughs> I like revved up my three know, there. You're trying to, trying to make it dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously he mentioned Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that was one. But the other two he mentioned were Tell Two Cities, Charles Dickens, and Great Gatsby of Scott Fitzgerald. I won't go That's into surprising. Yeah, I won't go into details of all those. But those were the three he named by name. So I'll be honest. At this joke is stolen, by the way. Oh God, he was only an okay Gatsby. Oh brother, this guy stinks. <laughs> but. <laughs> that's I'm, so I, that's I, so lame that's like your work stories that we were just talking about <laughs> he's come back like hey i heard this i heard this joke at work austin i gotta tell you it you know that that was lame 
Yeah, it's fine. Uh, but okay. I, I would, I'm not even lying. Do you like off, the Greek? off camera, I would really laugh at that. I had yeah. to, I had to hold that. I had to make it look like I'm normal. But that's actually. Pretty I like my lame jokes. <laughs> <They're good. laughs> but no, I thought the book. It, it's yeah, I know it's the American classic, but I gotta say, just not doesn't hold up the same. I think I am not a yeah. I'm not the biggest yeah, fan. No, me either. But, Lord of the Rings, you are. So yes, you agree with that, that one I completely agree. Yeah, Great with. Gatsby, I could take it or leave it. I've never read A Tale of Two Cities. That is actually really good. Oh, you have? It's mm-hmm. good. Okay. Well, what is the last author you got for me, Rich? We're looping back around. Wow. So Look at that. Joe Abercrombie actually talks about what pretty obviously one of his most influential books that he's read and that inspired him to do a lot of his books and also just one of his favorite books is actually A Song of Ice and Fire uh, series. So George R. R. Martin was a big influence. However, just kind of, that's the more standard answer. He, get, he gives another one that is his favorite book of all time. It's called The Big Nowhere. It has a 4.09 on, on Goodreads. And the blurb is... I just must interject and say, we're mm-hmm. giving way too much credit to Goodreads. We're, we're always we saying, it's like, they're the they're the bastion of ratings. No, no, they're not. <laughs> Tudor Ramble's rating site is that we're going to make one day. One but, of these days. <laughs> sorry, I interrupted. Go ahead. So, right. about? so this is actually a crime noir drama. Book. Okay. So in 1950s Los Angeles, the city of angels has become the city of the angel of death. Communist witch hunts and insanely violent killings are terrorizing the community. Three men are plunged into a maelstrom of violence and deceit when their lives become inextricably linked as each one confronts his own personal darkness. Told with Elroy's characteristically forceful and relentless style, the big nowhere is the link between the black uh, Dyla and L.A. Confidential in his masterwork, the L.A. Quartet. It is as powerful and thrilling as crime fiction goes. I see why that's Abercrombie's favorite. Yes. Yes. Yes, okay. Now, I just want to give two quotes mm. off of here that I thought was just so forceful mm. that I, I thought it was, it just instantly intrigued me. Okay. This they is their s- comments on the book? No, this is a quote from the book. Quote from the book? Okay. From the book. Just it, a lot, like, this yeah, is yeah. an example of just how hard, viscerally, and nasty and ugly the book is is this gonna get us banned off youtube actually yes <laughs> wait actually huh can, can you even say it i don't think so i think okay you're gonna have to we're gonna get your reaction and you're just gonna blurt out this okay you're just gonna mute this you can find the quote in the description down below along with right next to that link is a link to display which is one of our sponsors recently ah well, if you want say, 20 to 30 percent off <laughs> go sign up for display get wow. something like that above there that was smooth but here the quote for you to react okay. to okay What? <laughs> that is a great that's a great way to advertise a book. Like you blur out the thing and just have a reaction. Yeah. That's a great new advertising tactic yeah, that you discovered go. there. Well, hey, that did you have any other quote or that? No, that, that was, was it. I just thought Okay. It's just so intriguing and nasty. I have to know. I now kind Absolutely. of I, I got to read this book. Absolutely. Well, hey, if you guys like this kind of stuff and want more of your author's favorite books and us to give more recommendations of from your favorite authors, let us know. Subscribe. Comment down below. Check Dis- out Display if you want to support the channel or check out our Patreon where we have a monthly book club and movie watch party. It's a lot of fun. Join us over there. Bye-bye, y'all. Bye-bye. <laughs>